Hey there, y'all. Hello to my Facebook audience. Prophet David Taylor here, and I'm so glad to be back with you. Uh, you know, I wasn't with you last week because I was under the weather, and uh, so I wasn't able to broadcast live. Hello to my Periscope audience. I'm so glad to be back with you as well. So I wasn't able to broadcast uh, live like I normally do uh, last weekend, but praise God, I got some rest and uh, I took care of myself, so I'm feeling much better. Thanks for just staying with me and just, you know, being supportive. And uh, uh, just want to let you know I really appreciate it. Uh, I had a great time in church this morning. Uh, I know today's Super Bowl Sunday, but uh, we want to be sure that we honor God in all things and that we keep God first so that God will bless and honor us. Because if you honor God, he will honor you. And if you dishonor God, he will dishonor you. So we want to be sure we keep him, fir keep him first in all things. So as always, I uh, pray and I always see God's face about what he wants me to release to the body of Christ every week. And so this week, the word that the Lord gave me was increase. And there's actually two scriptures we're going to be looking at. The first scripture we're going to be looking at is Psalm 115, verse 14. So we're going to be looking at the book of Psalms, right in the middle of the Bible, uh, uh, chapter 115, verse 14. King James Bible, it says, the, May the, the Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. New American Standard, that verse says, May the Lord give you increase, you and your children. NLT, New Living Translation, May the Lord richly bless both you and your children. And uh, NIV version, May the Lord cause you to flourish both you and your children. Now, why is that important? Why is that word increase important? Well, that ties us into our next scripture, and our next scripture is Hebrews 11.6. And Hebrews 11.6 says, uh, reading out of the King James Version, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So let me read that again. Uh, Hebrews 11.6 But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now how are those two verses tied together? We looked at a verse about increase, the Lord increasing us more and more, us and our children. And we looked at a verse about having faith and it not being possible to please God without it. Here's how. And here's why. You have got to understand that there is a reward in serving the Lord. There is a reward. There is a harvest time. There is a harvest season. There is a blessing. This morning in church, we talked. the pastor was talking about glory. There's a, a reward that comes in serving God faithfully. And part of that reward is increase. Part of that reward is God taking you up to the next level in whatever you've been faithfully serving him in. The reason that's so important, especially, you know, here in Chicago in these cold winter months, is because fighting the good fight and staying on the path of growth can be really challenging sometimes. You can hit points where it feels like you've been sowing and sowing and sowing and sowing and sowing, and you say to, my, you say to yourself, when am I going to get my harvest? When am I get, going to get my increase? Am I always going to be on this level? Okay? But God says the answer to that question is no. God says that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Now, what does that mean in a practical sense? It means you are not a CME. You don't come to church on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. You're not one of those Christians that only talk to God once a week. Or you're not one of those Christians that only talk to God when you need him. Like he's a genie, like you can just pull him out of your back pocket and, you know, rub the lamp and say the magic words and get a blessing and then you don't talk to God no more until you need him again. Not that. That is not diligent. That is not what God rewards. That is not what God honors. But diligently seeking the Lord means that you have a consistency. You come before the Lord every day. You spend time in the Word of God, in the Bible every day. You spend time in God's presence you spend time with him, listening to his voice. You spend time fellowshipping with him every day. Okay? 
you have a supplication list. The supplication list is where you lift up your concerns to God, all the things that are in your heart and your mind. You are turning those over to God every day. And then you have an intercessory list. An intercessory list is specifically people that you are praying about, not you, because when you pray about you, that's supplication. That's when you're asking the Lord about the things that you want in your life. And we're supposed to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. In all things by prayer and supplication, let our requests be made known unto God. That's when you're talking about you. But intercession is when you're talking about other people. Okay? Where you have very specific things that you pray about for other people on a regular basis. And you bring that before God on a regular basis. So you don't just spend all your prayer time with God just talking about you and what you want. You spend some of your prayer time interceding, asking God for mercy, asking God for wisdom, asking God to save other people, asking God to rain his blessings down on other people, asking for mercy sometimes in the midst of judgment. Okay? And when you diligently seek God, God like that, when you are in front of God every day, when you are in his word every day, when you have, you know, several parts to your prayer list every day, then the Bible says that God is going to reward you. And part of that reward is, again, what we saw in Psalm 115. It's the increase. Now, what does that look like in a practical sense? Okay? You can literally apply it to every area of your life. If you have been seeking God, for example, about your marriage, and then the Lord gives you the answer with what he wants you to do, the kind of wife he wants you to be, the kind of husband he wants you to be, and you diligently obey that word and you apply those principles, then your marriage is going to increase. Your marriage is going to get better. It's going to get better than it was when you started. If you have been seeking God about your finances, and you've been you're getting prophetic words from the Lord, and you've been studying the scriptures, and you've been tithing and giving God offerings, and also making sacrificial offerings. If you have been doing that on a regular basis, then God is going to increase your finances. There's no way you can stay on the same level that you started on. If you have been faithfully investing in your ministry, and you've been learning and growing, and becoming a better minister, and releasing the messages that God wants you to release then God is going to increase your ministry. He's going to increase your audience. He's going to increase your reach. He's going to increase your impact. He's going to increase everything that he has called you to do if you do it faithfully, diligently. So that was a word that the Spirit of God gave for me to release to the body to help you understand that there really is reward in serving God because I want to stress again that many times in the middle, in the middle of your striving, in the middle of your journey, in the middle of your fight, in the middle of your reach, in the middle of what you're trying to do, it can get really heavy. It can get really messy. And it can feel like there's no end in sight. It can feel like no matter what I've done, all the things that I've done, it seems like there's no end to this thing. It seems like nothing else is coming. It seems like I'm just you know, doomed to be stuck on a treadmill, stuck in a loop, going over and over again, and that's just not true. Because God is saying, you will reap, you will get a harvest, you will get an increase, you will be able to take whatever you've been working on to that next level, because God is going to add that increase to you, and it says to you and your children. What does that mean? That means that you and your posterity gets blessed. Because whenever you get blessed, it doesn't just affect you. And whenever you get cursed, it doesn't just affect you. And whenever you do nothing, it doesn't just affect you. Okay? If you sit in your house your whole life and you never develop your gifts and you never develop your talents and your skills and you keep saying, well, it's my life and it doesn't make any difference, that's not true. You have robbed the world of your contribution. There's something unique that you have to offer that God put uniquely in you. And if you never develop it and share it with the world, you have robbed the world of, of something that the world needed. That's why God sent you into the earth through your mom and your dad. Because there's something very specific and particular that only you can do in the way that you do it. And if you live your whole life and you never develop that, you have robbed the world. It's not just you that's affected. 
If you get cursed, if you do something that draws the curse of God, that draws judgment, it's not going to stop with you. That curse is going to be visited on your children. Why do you think sometimes you see, hey, God bless you, God's true gift. Good to see you. God bless you. Why do you think sometimes families are destroyed by the same kinds of things? Haven't you ever noticed that? Sometimes the grandfather struggles with alcohol, and then the son struggles with alcohol, and then his son struggles with alcohol. That's a curse on that family bloodline. It's not just going to be you. Okay, that's the negative side. Then there's the positive side. The positive side is if you get blessed. If you get blessed financially, if you get blessed with a prophetic word, if you get blessed uh, with property, real estate assets, if you get blessed with a good friendship, if you get blessed with a good spouse, it's not just going to be you. Okay? Other people are going to be blessed and affected by what you do. And it's not just going to stay with you. So God says he's going to cause you to flourish. He's going to give you increase, both you and your children. So that's another point of encouragement I want to give you to hang in there so that you understand that it won't just be for you. The blessing won't just stop for you. And many times that's the kind of thing you have to have in your head sometimes when you're dealing with that really tough middle. Then on the other side of it is, man, when I get financially prosperous, I'm going to be able to do more for my kids. Man, when I'm, uh, if I've been working on my body, I've been working on losing weight, I've been working on changing my diet, and that's not easy. That's not easy at any stage in life. If you're used to living and eating a certain way, and then you have to make major changes, that's not easy. But you say, man, on the other side of this, I'm going to have more energy. I'm going to live longer. I'm going to live better. That gives me more time with my kids. That makes me more available with, with my children. And think about it. It gives me more time to impart wisdom. Because however old you are when you have kids, you will always be that much older than them. So if you had a baby when you're 16, when your son is 30, you'll be 46. You'll always be 16 years older than your child. You'll always be further down the road of life than them. And the longer you live and the healthier you live, you'll have more wisdom to impart to them as you go through life. Okay, so financial prosperity, longevity, uh, wisdom, a good marriage. Think about if you write a book. Think about if you write a song. Think about if you write a play. Think about that. That thing is going to outlive you. People are going to be singing that. People are going to be singing your song. People are going to be reading your words. People are going to be getting edified and challenged by the words in your book, by the, the lyric content of your song, by the storyline and the songs in your play. And that thing is going to outlive you. Think about it. Because it's a lot of work to mount a play. If you've ever been a part of a, a theatrical production on any level, let me tell you, it's a lot of work, no matter what you do. If you're the author, if you're the writer, if you just write the music, if you do lights, if you do makeup and hair, if you do costuming, if you do advertising, if, you do, if you're part of the stage crew, if you're assistant director, it doesn't matter. If you mount something theatrical, that is a lot of work. But, and it tends to get messy in the middle, because rehearsals can be long and tiring, but after you've created it, that thing is going to be played and sung and gone over hundreds of years after you're gone. People are still going to be able to be blessed. And see, that's part of increase. Did you ever think about it like that? That is part of the increase that God wants to give your life to where not only you have a blessing, but you can be a blessing and that blessing rolls forward exponentially. How many times have we looked at historical figures for encouragement and inspiration? Because we looked at what they went through. We looked at what they endured and then we looked at the contribution they left behind them. For example, it's because of the Civil Rights Act that was passed in 1964 that uh, uh, women and African Americans and other ethnic minorities have been able to go to college. Okay? It's because of that act that was passed in 1964 that we've been able to enjoy that. Because before that, everybody wasn't able to get a higher education. Hold on one second. Everything okay? Yep. Okay. So, 
That is something, that's a blessing that is still rolling forward to this day. So that's what I mean when I say the increase is not just going to stop with you. It's going to affect you and your children. And it's going to keep rolling forward many, many years after you're gone. So all that is designed in this prophetic word to give you the encouragement that you need if you're stuck in a messy middle. If you're stuck in a messy middle and you're having a hard time and you're feeling discouraged, I don't want you to be discouraged. I want you to be encouraged. I don't want you to give up. I want you to realize that whatever you're going through to produce what you're trying to produce, it's worth it. Because not only is God going to increase it in your life, not only is it going to be a blessing to you, you're not only going to have the best blessing, but you yourself are going to be a blessing and it's going to roll forward. And uh, specifically thinking about your children, whether, whether they are biological, adopted, uh, stepchildren, blended family, or spiritual children, I want you to think about this. Don't you know that you can save your children 20 years worth of struggle with a 20-minute conversation? Did you know that? Did you know that you could take a 20 minutes out of your life and have lunch with your kids and stop them from making mistakes that would cost them 20 years out of their lives? Did you ever think about that? So I want you to know that you have value. You have value. You are bringing something to the table. And so that's why God does not want us to be discouraged today if we're stuck in a messy middle. If we're in a place where it just the battle seems long and the mountains seem high and the valleys seem low and you might be feeling tired and you're asking yourself, why am I doing this? The answer to that question is God is going to increase you He's going to increase you, both you and your children, because he's a rewarder of those that seek him diligently. And that blessing is going to roll forward for generations yet to come. So I want you to be encouraged and I don't want you to give up. Okay? So that's a prophetic teaching that the Holy Spirit gave me today to be sure that you knew that the word of the Lord for this Sunday, February 4th, Super Bowl Sunday, was increased. Uh, now, there's a prophetic, a prophetic word I need to release, and then we'll pray and close it out. For yea, my people, says God, I see you. I see you, those of you that are being faithful. I see you rising up early to seek my face. I see you staying up late to study my word. And I am a God of my word. I will reward you. I will give you increase. Those of you that diligently seek my face, I will show you great and mighty things that you don't know. I will open up your understanding. I will give you witty inventions. I will give you wisdom beyond your years. I will give you multi-million dollar ideas. I will give you favor with your fellow man. I will give you networking op opportunities. I will give you open doors. I will reward you for your diligence. So don't give up. Be encouraged, continue to seek my faith, and I will take you from faith to faith, from level to level, and from glory to glory, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Well, that encouraged me. That blessed me. I definitely needed to hear that. So I'm always grateful to the Holy Ghost for whatever he has to say, and I'm always grateful to be used of God because I say it every week, because I want to encourage those of you that are ministers and I want to encourage those of you that are fighting your call to the ministry. It's an honor to be used by God. If you are already a minister, I know it's easy to get really tired. Because you can get drained as God pours out through you. Because you still live in a clay body. And sometimes that can be tiring. If you have a call of ministry on your life and you're fighting it. I want to encourage you to accept your call because it's an honor to be used by God. The reason that God is calling you is because he believes in you. He's put something inside of you that has great value to his kingdom and to the world, and he wants you to exercise that gift. And you will discover when you give in to your ministry call that there is no higher thing you could be doing with your life. Because God does not need us. God don't need me for nothing. What does he need me for? What, is, what was he doing to run the universe before I showed up? Before I crawled out of my mama's room? God don't need me. He's given me a chance not to waste my life 
That's what a ministry call is. It's a chance not to waste your life, but for God to use your life for his eternal and his divine purposes. It's an honor to have the word of God and the spirit of God breathe through you. That's an honor. So I want to encourage those of you that are running from your ministry call. Don't run from, from your call. Accept your call and let God use your life the way he wants to use it. You'll discover it's the best choice that you've made because it's an honor to carry the word of God. And I can say like King David, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wickedness. I'd rather be close to Jesus. I'd rather be in God's house. I'd rather have the Lord's voice in my ear. I'd rather have his favor. I'd rather have his word. I'd rather have his spirit than anything else. Okay? So I just want to encourage those of you that it's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it to give in to your ministry call and to be used of God. Okay? So God bless you. I hope you're encouraged by that word. I certainly was. I was certainly blessed by what the Holy Spirit had to say. So we're going to do a closing prayer. We're going to close it out. Then I got a few quick announcements. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Father. We can call you, Father, because of Jesus, because of his blood, because he became our sin on Calvary's cross, because he was brutalized and broken and embarrassed and ashamed and pierced for our sake, that he became every piece of ugly that we've ever been and we will ever be. And because he did that, we can now approach you in his name and call you Father. And we just thank you for that honor. That's an honor and that's a privilege and we give you glory for it. And we thank you, Jesus, for making that sacrifice because we had a thousand tongues, Lord. We could never thank you enough. We could never thank you enough for what you've done for us because amazing love how can it be that thou, my God, shouldest die for me? And we thank you, Jesus, that you sent the Holy Spirit because we have no connection to heaven without the Holy Ghost. We have no way to contact you. We have no way to know you. We have no way to understand the scriptures. And we have absolutely no way to live righteously without the Holy Ghost. So we give praise to the Father. We give praise to the Son. We give praise to the Holy Ghost three in one. And we thank you for your graciousness towards us. And thank you on the Super Bowl Sunday that we're alive, that we have food to eat, that we have family, that we're alive, we're warm inside, we're safe. We thank you for so many wonderful blessings. So we thank you for your prophetic word. And we want to honor you as best we can and learn how to be diligent and faithful and seek you that we might receive your grace, your reward, and your increase. And we thank you for what you've already done. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. So God bless you again. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. Um, as you know, I was under the weather last week, but I'm back. Praise God, I'm healed. And back out here, uh, releasing the prophetic word. So, as you know, my uh, music ministry is also going. That is Prophet David Taylor and Shades of the Cross. So I want to let you know I'm working on getting that third video ready. There's a third video in the my first EP. So you've seen the first two songs. The first two songs are Get Your Praise On and Creator. Those are already out. They're on my YouTube channel, Prophet David Taylor and Shades of the Cross. You can find links on my Twitter, PDTSOTC, and you can find them on my Facebook page, Prophet David Taylor and Shades of the Cross. So I'm working on that third video. The third video is a song called I Shall Not Die. So I was going to have that ready, but I fell ill last week, so I didn't get a chance to uh, get it taken care of. So uh, I will get that video together, and I will let you know when I'm ready to drop that. Hopefully it'll be really, really soon, because I meant to have it this week, but it didn't work out for this week. But I will get that video together, and we'll drop it, and we'll let you know, and then the EP will be available. Okay? So again, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your prayers. And I will see you same time next week. Uh, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on both Facebook and Periscope. And then my Periscope is also simultaneously broadcast on my Twitter. So you can actually uh, catch me three places. You can always watch the replay. Thank you so much. God bless you. I hope that prophetic, words, prophetic word was a blessing to you. And I'll talk to you next week.